Hello and welcome to yet another quick and easy tutorial. Today I'll show you how to make borders for your fantasy maps, artworks and other projects. And as always, because I like lazy designs, you can create them once and reuse over and over again. We will start by creating a blank canvas in Procreate, 1000 by 1000 should be enough. Then we will add an extra layer and fill it with white as a background. Now for the design brush, you can use anyone you like. Obviously, if you're going for a specific look, like clean lines or textured ones, then use relevant brushes that reflect it. But overall, you can use a very clean, ornate border for a roughly sketched map, so there is no one rule. I am going for a monoline because this design, I don't want to have variations in the thickness of the lines, but I have used previously studio pen for the flowery border that you've seen before, so it's really up to you. Now we're going to change the color of the brush to black and add drawing guides. You can find it in the canvas menu on the top left corner of the screen. Click on edit drawing guides and adjust the number of squares to your liking. I've chosen 100 pixels so I get 10 squares horizontally and vertically. Now I am drawing the outside lines of the borders, adjust the size of the brush to your liking. I wanted to make the outside thicker than the inside ones. I'm going to create a new layer now and add more lines but this time diagonally to create an uneven slanted overlapping design. You can hold the drawn line and click on edit if you're not happy with the placement of it. Since the design is on a different layer, I can easily erase the lines that stick out and clean them a little bit. Now I'm going to duplicate the layer, drag it to the side and flip it to create an overlapping line. They don't have to be perfect unless you're going for a very geometrical border look. If you like more hand-drawn style, in my opinion, the imperfections add to the finished look. Add or erase any lines that look odd and clean them up. Now I'm going to group the design lines and duplicate both of them again so I can distribute the overlapping lines the way I want to. Now we can merge the layers of the design and group them with the outside borders. I'm also creating some duplicates of the border itself. It's a good practice to always have a backup copy in case we want to revert something or we merge the layers and can't undo it later on. I am erasing the overlapping lines to create continuity of each element and create a bit more depth. Now that we're done, I'm creating another copy of the design and the white background layer so we can ensure the design repeats perfectly. Select one group of the design and the background layer, press on the arrow to move, ensure snapping is on and drag the entire section to the top. Make sure that you can see the orange line on the top. This means the design is perfectly centered on the canvas. Repeat the steps to drag the other duplicated layer and the background layer to the bottom. We can now merge the design layers and create some details. I will add a few circles to break the sharp edges of the border and add variation to the angles. 
One large in the center and two small ones should be enough. Now for the creation of the brush itself. The first thing to avoid any issues is to change the color of the design. For that I am switching visibility off on all of the layers but the design itself. And I'm just duplicating it in case I ever need to change anything. The next thing to do is to turn alpha lock on on the design visible layer. Choose white color for the brush. And for this I will be using a round brush in the painting section of the brushes in Procreate and I'll ensure it's the biggest size. Now it will color the design white due to the alpha lock being on. With that complete, we can export the picture to our gallery. We will choose the PNG type to retain the transparency. With that complete, we'll create a new layer to test our design on and turn the background back on. Now we can create the brush itself. For that I will be using an existing brush called Grid. You can find it in the Textures brush menu. Simply drag it to the left and press on Duplicate, then click again on the created copy to amend its settings. We're going to choose Grain section and change the Grain Behavior option to Texturized. Then we click on Edit and Import from Photos our exported PNG picture. It should be a white picture on a black background like so. Press Done to go back to the settings. Now we're going to change the shape settings. See those blurry edges on the circle shape? This would create a transparent edging, which is usually not what we want when creating a border. We're going to change it by going to edit and this time choosing our import from the source library. Here you can see all shapes, but I will choose one with the sharp edges. This lets us control the coverage of the border a bit easier. The last thing we'll change is the scale to make our borders smaller. You can adjust the slider or click on the percentage and enter it on the keypad there. Now, as you can see here, this texture will create lines of our borders and I'll show you in a moment how to use it in your art without duplicating the borders on the sides. The last thing we'll change is the flow in Apple Pencil settings menu. This will ensure there are no opacity issues when drawing. Press done and our brush is complete. We can now test it if it works the way we want it to. Change the color of the brush and test it on the canvas. My iPad has a hover option, but if yours doesn't, just start drawing to see the results. In my case, you can see two or more lines of borders are covered with this size of the brush. So I'm going to change the size of it, but don't get misled by the little icons shown when you adjust the size. The border's thickness will not change, just the area of the brush I'm using to draw the border itself. This means you'll just have to either draw it using more strokes or adjust the size again so it's just about to cover the entire width of the border strip. If you flip the canvas you can draw bottom and the top line of the borders without changing the brush as well. However, I would suggest you draw each side of the border on a separate layer so you can adjust the position without messing up with the design or duplicate the created lines like I do here. Once you're happy with how it looks, you can merge the layers later on. As you can see, the corners will overlap. That's because the border is a line. To fix that, you can go inside each corner and try to fix and align the design to your liking. And that's why I like to create each side on a separate layer. Or a quicker fix is to add corner details that will just hide the misalignment of the design like I do so on this map. Now the last thing to remember is that you have to go to the brush settings to change the size of the border. Use scale slider in the grain section. With each change, feel free to adjust the size of your brush so it just about to covers the thickness of the design. This ensures you can draw it with one stroke, but also that the lines won't repeat on the sides. And because it's a seamless pattern brush, you can quickly adjust the color of it as long as you haven't changed the scale of the design once you drew it. Simply just change the color and paint it over. 
You can create many different designs or just a few iconic ones to use in your artwork. I guarantee a well-designed border will make your work look more polished. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you for being here and your support. Until the next one, bye!